Hello learners, I am Yashika Channa, Assistant Professor from Lady Sri Ram College, BLA Department. Uh, I majorly deal with pedagogy of language and today I, we are going to learn about second language acquisition specifically with English. If you look at India as a continent, so multilinguality becomes our default human condition. Now what we need to understand is the word multilinguality. When we say multi, it means multiple or more than two in number or at least two in numbers. Linguality refers to our language repertoire, the basic languages that we know. For example, if you look at a child who is probably growing up in Himachal or Bihar, so the child would speak Bhojpuri or Maithili at his home or at her home. And if we are dealing with a child in Himachal Pradesh, the child might speak Dogri. But when these kids would come to school, there would be two other languages which will be introduced to them. One would be Hindi and other would be English. So at least when they grow up, they will be aware of three languages. One would be Hindi, other would be English and third would be their home language, which might be Dogri in the case of Himachal, which might be Bhojpuri or Maithili in case of the child coming from Bihar or hailing from Bihar region. Now, when we deal with second language learning, so we need to discuss two topics or two concepts. One concept is of something called as language language acquisition and other is language learning. So the first thing that we need to understand is how language acquisition is different from language learning. So uh, there is one of the linguists who has defined the concept of language acquisition. He says that if we learn, that's Stephen Creation. So Creation has said that if we learn language in a natural environment, at a home, without making a conscious effort to learn a language, that process of imbibing or learning the language is called language acquisition. And when we talk about language learning, it is a process where we deal or we try to learn language in a more conscious manner. It is more like we are in a classroom setting and we try to learn what are the various rules or the grammar uh, for a particular language, how to speak, how to pronounce. The only difference between acquisition and learning is how we are learning or the environment of learning. If you are learning it in a more natural or subconscious way, it is acquisition. If we are learning it in a manner which is more institutionalized, it is more conscious and a proper effort is being made, it is called language learning. So when we are dealing with language acquisition, generally we are not aware of the rules that we are dealing with. For example, a kid whose uh, native language is Hindi, he would make a mistake of grammar when they start speaking. For example, if a child says, Most of our native Hindi speakers, even at the age of one or one and a half, they would say, Mujhe paani do. It would never come out to be like, Do paani mujhe. Why? Are we, when, we are, when they are uh, learning language or when they are acquiring language, do we make a special effort to tell them where, how the structure of the language is, where we have to place a subject, object or verb? No, we are not telling them. It is something that they acquire on their own over a period of time. But when it comes to... Uh, Second language, it might differ or it may not differ. That is something that we'll uh, look at consequently. Now, if we look at like, if parents are to correct, they have this tendency to correct children on the basis of their truthfulness. For example, if a child says, Kal mangal war hai, ya mangal war hai kal, ya uh, agar ye kaha jata hai, mangal war. The parent would probably correct the child saying that tomorrow is Monday, it's not Tuesday. But they won't focus on the grammar of the or the structure of the sentence. So the focus of the parent is on the truthfulness of the content, not at the grammatical structure 
or the grammar. So where is a child learning this grammar or the rules of language? It's basically through the exposure that he or she gets to the language. So what are the kind of exposure that we get at home language? It is from our parents, our elders, our friends, television, radio, internet. So there are multiple sources the child is learning from. But he or she learns snippets or various things about the language. But when they produce that language, it is more coherent and comprehensive in nature. So there is something in their mind which helps them to articulate and tell the language in a more uh, coherent fashion. Okay. Uh, now if we come to this word called learning. We often say that we go to school to learn. But when it comes to language learning, how are we learning the language? At times, if we remember our early school years, we used to uh, learn the rules or the grammatical structures of language. We used to make tables. How we learn, like we used, uh, if you remember, we used to make tables of tenses. So it used to go like uh, present. Past, future. So, is in singular, are in plural, was in singular, were in plural, will or shall in singular, will be or shall be in plural. So if you remember our primary classes, so this was a way that we used to learn about the language rules, specifically English, because English is one language, which is our second language probably because that is something which we don't encounter in our home or our immediate environment. Hindi could also be a second language for a lot of people, for example, kids hailing from Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Bengal. For Bengalis, their first language is Bengali and it might be possible that they are speaking Santhali. And when it come, if they are speaking Santhali, when they come to school and the, the language for uh, school or you could say the language that has been, they are taught in could be Bengali. So Bengali becomes their second language in that case. And Hindi might be a third or English might be a foreign language or the third language. So it is more about the environment and the structures that you are using that particular language in. It is not something to do with language per se. It is the environment which defines whether a language is a first language, second language or a foreign language. Now, if we want to make students learn English, what can be the possible ways? Should we focus on language acquisition or language learning? If we focus on language acquisition, what could be the various steps that a teacher can take uh, for giving that kind of environment to the child? So we start with language acquisition. So Creation talked about something called as comprehensible input. So what is a comprehensible input? When we, t uh, when we talk about the term comprehensible, it means something that a student or a learning learner can infer, can understand, can make meaning of, can make sense of. So if we talk about providing a language, like providing an environment where the learner is more comfortable in acquiring a language, then we need to give something called as comprehensible input. How can we give that comprehensible input? The first thing is like by providing natural communicative situations. That you have to give them situations which are something where they can uh, assert themselves freely, where they can assert themselves more naturally. For example, if we talk about acquiring of Hindi as a second language, and we're talking about language acquisition over here. So if you remember, we used to have primers in Hindi which use sentences like,
सांप पर मत चढ़ हाउ ऑथेंटिक और कॉम्प्रिहेंसिबल द सेंटेंस और द सेंटेंसेस एनी चाइल्ड वुड नेवर स्पीक सच अ सेंटेंस थ्रू आउट हिज और हर लाइफ बिकॉज वेन वी से सांप पर मत चढ़ सांप पर आप बात करिए कि सांप पर कौन चढ़ता है नो बडी वुड एक्चुअली स्टेप ऑन अ स्नेक राइट सो दीज काइंड ऑफ सेंटेंसेस और प्राइमर्स मेक लेस ऑथेंटिक और मोर अनैचुरल वे ऑफ लर्निंग अ लैंग्वेज वट डू वी नीड टू डू इज टू प्रोवाइड चाइल्ड समथिंग कॉल एस इमर्शन इमर्शन मीन्स वेन वी आर गिविंग चाइल्ड लॉर्ड ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू कम्युनिकेट इन अ टारगेटेड लैंग्वेज वेन वी आर गिविंग हिम लॉर्ड ऑफ एक्सपोजर टू द लैंग्वेज थ्रू डिफरेंट मीडियम्स इट कुड बी थ्रू स्टोरीज प्रिंट मीडिया ऑडियो विजुअल्स एंड गिविंग दम अपॉर्चुनिटी टू स्पीक टू एजर्व दम सेल्फ्स when we are doing that the focus of the language learning is not on to rectifying the mistakes but to work on the fluency let the child speak let him let him or her make those mistakes because every the mistake that child makes is not a mistake it is a natural order of learning the natural order of learning right uh so when we talk about language acquisition we are moving from meaning to structures and when we talk about language learning we are moving from structures to meaning we are not here deciding on which approach is right or wrong because both of the approaches complement each other they are not something which are kind of like this is better than the other it's more like a complementary package the if the teacher provides an environment for language acquisition she needs to provide an environment for language learning as well because language learning helps us to monitor and edit our acquisition for example acquisition can help us to get the fluency in the language but the correctness is provided by something called as language learning where we understand the structure and the grammar of language so we can say that language learning is editor and this is initiation and fluency so first focus is on acquiring fluency or initiation of the language and then on later on later on stages we actually work on the correctness of our utterances so we need some time to actually formulate a particular sentence in our mind so look at the structure and the correctness this is more likely when we do it in a written form in a communicative situation the more important thing is to be fluent comprehensive and coherent then to be correct should i uh, i'll be reiterating whatever we have done in the perspective of language learning and language acquisition so language learning and language acquisition are both complementary processes that's first thing language learning help us to correct or edit our utterances that we learn through language acquisition because it is ha it has more to do with initiation the fluency of language third the difference between language acquisition and language learning is about the environment that we learn the language in the more natural and the more subconscious way of learning is language of learning language is language acquisition and where we take of when we are learning a language in a formal setup in a classroom when the focus and we consciously focusing on learning of language it's called language learning as a process okay so uh, the second question that comes to our mind does our first language interferes with the learning of our second language so most of the people tend to have this tendency to say that as our first language is hindi or punjabi or bengali so we have this tendency of using the same kind of tonal patterns structures while we are learning the second language but if we look at the neurology of it our brain is very plastic what do we understand the plasticity of the brain plasticity of the brain means that our brain expands the more we learn it helps us acquire more and more language and then you must have learned about something called as critical period of language learning 
till the age of 5 or 6 our brain uh, has this tendency to acquire more than 5 languages without uh, the child does not actually face any problem in learning more than one language. So actually if we talk about it interferences first language never interferes with the learning of second language it complements it because we understand different structures for example if you look at what children have this tendency of making this mistake okay. In Hindi we write Mujhe Gaint Chahiye So here it is a subject then we have the object and then we have the verb The structure of Hindi is subject, object, verb When we translate this sentence in English the translation becomes So, here it is subject, want, a, it's a verb phrase and ball is the object. So, there is a difference between structure of Hindi and English. For the structure of Hindi is subject, object, verb and English the structure is subject, verb, object. But we often get this mistake where the child tend to speak, Mujhe gain chahiye, I, ball, want. This translation becomes I ball want. So they are using the same structure that subject, object and verb. So the difference is that it is not a mistake but natural order of learning. For example, it is not that if they are being told about the difference between the structure that is where pedagogy comes into picture. That is where teacher comes into picture who will facilitate them to understand the difference between the structure of both the languages. So it's not a mistake but a natural order of learning. For example, if we talk about negatives or negations. So when we talk about negation or negatives, what do we mean by negation? Negation means saying no or saying that we don't want something. So, uh, so as the learner is learning, so the first problem when it comes, it's not a problem but rather a order in which the child says, the negation is being placed in the initial position. The child always places negation at the initial position of the sentence, not like it now, not want water, not, not playing. So this is an order and the second thing that comes with this like uh, putting a negation in front of the verb. I know like going. Going is a verb and we are placing a negation in front of the verb. So that is another order that has been followed when we learn or the learner learns about the negation or how to use negatives. Then the second thing which is very common in uh, second language acquisition is uh, getting to know about different S. So the first thing that the learner learns about is how to use S in a plural form. For example, how do we make a plural of bat? So it becomes bats, pencils, pens. At times, children also overgeneralize it to concepts like childs. Woman's, man's.
So this is where the child is actually making an overgeneralization. He or she has learned about the S as a plural form. And he has to learn or she has to learn about the exceptions where the plural of child would be children, plural of woman would be women, man would be men. So then after learning about the plural S, children learn about something called as possessive S. What is a possessive S? Possessive S is where we use an apostrophe. That is when we say girls or sharmas, which means that this thing or this is something that belongs to that particular girl or this is something that belongs to Shama or Mr. Sharma, whosoever it is. Apostrophe shows a certain kind of a relation between the object and the person. So that is something which comes later after learning of plural S. So this is something called as a natural order of thing. Now we come to vocabulary. So if we talk about vocabulary, there are a lot of words and expressions which are particular to a certain language. For example, we cannot find an equivalent of bindi, sari, jalebi, kanyadan in English or feras in English because this is a very Indian concept. So for every concept to translate in other languages is not possible because language is not something just, just as a tool of communication, it is more of a cultural vehicle as well. So there are a lot of vocabulary, a lot of words which are particular to a culture, right? We can say uh, as an Indians, if we are interacting with each other, we, if we say, oh, she was wearing a very beautiful sari that day. So each one of us has a concept of a sari, what a sari is. And if we say this to a Norwegian woman or a woman belonging to Chile or belonging to uh, Finland, so probably they might not understand that what is the kind of a garment we are referring to. Or if we say on the day of Diwali, we had jalebis as our prasad. So there are three terms. We are talking about Diwali, which is a Hindu festival. It might not create any concept in people who don't know about Indian culture. Jalebi. Jalebi is again an Indian dessert. So we might not have an equivalent of it in any other language. And then Prasad, the concept of Prasad. So there are, there are a lot of words or vocabulary which is particular to a particular language and culture which may, might not have any equivalence in other language, right? And then there is something called as like uh, when we start when we acquire a second language, we try to make that language our own. So we have, uh, we use that language in a particular way. We have certain nuances placed in that language. We have learned English from Britishers and the pronunciations that we use are called BRPs, British Received Pronunciations. But then there are a lot of expressions that are very Indian and they can be referred as Indian English because we have different varieties of English. We have something called as British English. We have variety called as American English, Australian English, and we are trying to make a canon for something called as Indian English. Our authors, and we often use certain expressions, which is very Indian. For example, she is my cousin's sister. So here we have already used a gender marker. It's called a gender marker because we use she for a female and not for a male. So referring here back again to a sister is redundant. Because already when we say she is my cousin, so it means that you're talking about a female. So you don't have to mention as a cousin, sister, because sister again reiterates her gender, which has already been mentioned. So the use of this word is redundant. Or if we look at expression like my boss belongs 
to Delhi only. So the use of word only over here. If he says that my boss belongs to Delhi, so we don't need a only over here, but that's a very Indian usage of English. Or if we say, I'm going gymming. The use of word gymming itself is a Indian English use or an Indian English phrase. It is not used anywhere else other than India. So, or even if you look at the level of pronunciations, so there are a lot of words that we are not able to pronounce. For example, if we talk about this name, most of us would read this name as Thomas, this as Th, right? But this actual pronunciation is like Thomas. So, but then the pronunciation of the word, it's a name. So the pr pronunciation cannot be incorrect and we have uh, tha as a sound in our language repertoire. So that's why we mention it as Thomas and not Thomas. Another thing, lot of us have this tendency of putting I, for example, when we say word school. So most of us pronounce it as is school or is crew. So, this tendency of putting a vowel in front of a consonant, this is a, this is a consonant cluster, if we see, it's a consonant cluster. And we are putting a vowel in front of it. So, it's a feature of Indian English, it's not a mistake, but a feature. So students, I would like to end my lecture over here, but we'll just go back to the certain concepts that we have dealt about English language learning and learning of English as a second language. So the first thing that we try to understand is like, what is a second language? The second thing that we try to understand, what is the difference between language acquisition and language learning? Third thing that we did was like, whether uh, first language interferes with the learning of second language, then what are the mistakes? Do we make mistakes because of interference of our first language or it is a natural order of things? And at last, we try to understand the nuances of Indian English. That what are the certain features which define Indian English? And they cannot be considered as mistakes. Thank you, students. I'll, we'll meet for the next lecture later. Thank you.